Hello everyone. So today in our runtime terrain generation system, so we are going to work on the height map of the landscape. Now, as you can see here, now we have a much better height map. So we have mountains and boulders and some small uh, scale variations in the ground. So if I enable wireframe view, you can see, you can see that we have the mountains and this large pit and in this you can see even in this small scale we have some smaller variations of the height map so this is much more interesting than what we had in the last time so that's what we are going to work on improving the height map of the landscape and the runtime run in the, the the landscape that generated in the runtime so here and uh, before we get started, I'd like to remind you that you can download all the project files in uh, my Patreon page, not just for this project, but also for all the projects that I have worked on in my channel. There are over thousands of tutorials to the date and you can download any of them once you become a member. And I'll leave the link in description and let's get back to the tutorial. okay so this is what we have developed so far so you can see we do have some kind of a landscape of terrain but it does not look very interesting so now we are going to work on improving the height map so to get a more interesting shape on our landscape okay so um let me open my blueprint and this height generation happens in this part so uh, let me promote this to a function i'll call it get height and i'll make it a po function so that we don't have to connect an execution line and this one is in x In what? and that's enough so actually yeah uh, now before anything here yesterday I just added these two together so instead of adding what if we multiply these two so it should make the terrain okay we need to ah uh, okay uh, i'll make this um sure, 3000 so now this looks a bit more random compared to what we had before but it's still not good enough so what we want to have is we need a some mountains and then let's say like boulders and then some small detail on the ground some small level height variation so if i draw this let me so let's say we have some these are mountains and then on this mountain we may have some noise that goes maybe something like this so and so this is like boulders and then a small detail so something like this so if i add these two together we will have an interesting shape perhaps something like i don't know my drawings are bad I should have drawn that in the downside. But so the result could be something like this. So a more complex shape, basically. That's what I want to say. So here. 
um, let me define let me multiply this by some value both of these things and I'll call this let me make a little fallout let's say um, something like this the reason that I'm going for a smaller value is because uh, the noise that we get at the moment seems to uh, the scale wise it's not broad enough so if I go for a smaller scale uh, think of this as tiling of a texture so if we use something like a decimal value uh, this texture scale becomes large okay now let's see see now we have some larger variation over some large area now if I say 5000 yeah so now we have some interesting uh, shape maybe we need a little bit more about 10,000 wait why did it become smaller ah sorry I used 1000 oh I fell out okay so this is good see we have some pit and some mountains so this scale is nice uh, but as you can see if I enable wireframe so it's, it's smooth so now we need to break this smoothness now we have mountains the next level is boulders let's say so so how can we get that so for that we might need another layer so we can actually use the same part Perhaps I should create another function. So, what should I call this? I'll call it, let's collapse this to fun of another function. Perving noise to the and PO stands X in X and Y because I used the in for some reason here and well it's just to say input then it's here and then the multiplier plier, the final multiplier yeah let's call it amplitude so if we consider this like a wave uh, noise so it's a uh, amplitude okay now we don't need literal floats so oh i don't remember what did you had here 0 0.01 0 0.00 and 10,000 okay now uh, if I If I duplicate this, so this is the let's say boulder level. 
and add these two together so now we need a small scale noise so input is same scale let's say 10 times smaller and amplitude 10 times lower right let's see okay now we have some rugged landscape maybe a little bit too much considering the scale yeah well it depends on what you want in your game if this works for you then it's fine but i don't think i want this much of a variation so perhaps Let's see. It seems fine. Okay, now we have two levels. So the next we can go another for more minor details. Um, Do we see the difference? Yeah, I guess I do. See some changes in here. So yeah. So now this is much better than what we had before. Okay. okay nice so the next step is uh working on a material for this because uh, right now all we have is this uh this basic box texture uh so actually if i just try to apply some textured material so a regular textured material this will not work at the more oh sorry i haven't connected this so oh, what was that okay to be honest it doesn't look i don't see much of a difference but yeah in short distance we see more variation that's what happens now okay okay all right so as i was saying so the next step is um texture so as i said if i apply this textured material it will not work let me show you see it we only get the color one color the reason is we haven't added any uvs here when we generate the landscape and we are going to work on that in the next episode so thanks for watching as always uh, updated project files will be available for you to download in the patreon page link would be in the description below and see you in another episode goodbye